Uh, my name is Tom Morgan. I'm the founder and CEO of Net2 Television uh, Corporation. We're a free ad supported television distributor of, of long form programming for smart TV. So, um, you, you asked the question about uh, if, that what period of television history is this? Or well, I'm, I'm a student of television history. And I think this is the third phase with the most important date, dates preceding this uh, August 28th, 1948, and September 7th, 1979. What, what were those events? In 1948, uh, Frank Stanton of CBS announced that he had just raided Lucille Ball, Milton Berle, Jack Benny, and Burns and Allen away from uh, NBC and was going to basically sign them radio and assign them to TV. And you saw the beginnings of I Love Lucy and whole new programming. In September 7th, 1979, um, a doubleheader softball uh, game was broadcast for the first time on a little startup called ESPN. That was the first uh, broadcast date of the new form of programming. So I think wh whereas most people talk about this as being a new generation of television technology and everything else, what I think the answer is, these are the emergence of the new networks of television. So like you had ESPN and MTV emerge in the late 70s, early 80s, you're going to see whole new forms of programming emerge here. Um, is it radically different? I don't think so. I think people in a television setting, which are sitting on a couch, looking at a screen on the wall, regardless of the technology, want to be entertained. They want to be informed. They want to be engrossed and engaged. That's our job in the industry. The programming format and the contents can be a little bit different. Reinventing ESPN, fool's folly. They do it quite well. It's not going away. Even this cord cutting idea will disappear because they'll be on all the platforms, whether I have a cable TV or a connected internet TV, ESPN will be there. Um, the new kinds of programming are new forms of things that are very engaging. Um, they're very a little bit more niche more targeted, very passion directed. And those are the kinds of things we focus on. We work with CBS Interactive on Chow. We work Discovery with Revision 3. But in our case, instead of just searching and clipping, you actually spend two to three hours with the program and you, you dive deep with your programmer. And we help distribute that program. We don't produce the shows, but we do distribute high quality branded entertainment to that connected television. So who do we go after? Who's our customer? Um, Basically, the, 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 part, the people buying the new connected televisions, and basically every television above 30 inches from now on will be connected to the internet. So this is mass market uh, television. People that go to Costco and Walmart and Best Buy to buy a connected TV and bring it home, they turn it on and they go, I bought this television to watch television. Um, that's what they think the killer application is, and you have to be responsive to the consumer. What do they want to watch? things that Comcast doesn't currently provide to them, or Dish, or something like that. So if I'm into cooking, I might be into Cajun cooking. Let's go deep on that. So this new form of programming tends to go after a traditional television viewer. It's not 18 to 24-year-old um, young kids um, buying flat panels and doing weird stuff. It's not. It's people that are sitting at home during prime time, want to be entertained, and they get 500 channels, they watch 15, and then they complain nothing's on because it doesn't go deep enough into their personal interest. So this is closer to being personal interest television for uh, people interested in cooking, traveling, uh, whatever it is. So you'll see a different class of programming here that's kind of engaging and very personal. And how about the second screen experience? What Second screen experience, if, if our objective is to get a person to engage and sit for a long term, using a little bit to navigate, but you know, it's like a lot of new technologies. Uh, when you enhance it, the experience sometimes is worse. So, you know, the, the remote, you know, channel changing was pretty good, and then we really confused it. And now, if you make it too insane, access and control becomes an issue. Using the second screen for that, great. But the other part is, how do you engage supplementally? Um, if you're in niche programming, so if you're watching a cooking show and you want to learn more about that while you're still watching the show, whether it's an all-clad pot or pan, I think that's the kind of areas you'll see. I haven't seen a very good use of second screen yet, so from my standpoint, the primary screen is mostly what we're focusing on in building viewership ratings. We'll get to second screen, but it probably, in our case, isn't the driving factor we worry about. And. The, the keynote um, today, uh, Jeremy, Tony talked about how search is broken and it's it's we need new forms of search, and and there's so much okay. coming at us. Uh, I'm I'm a little bit contrarian. 
I believe from a television experience, that I believe in curation. I believe in Howard Stern. Howard Stern in XM Radio, he reinvented it. People trust people like that. They, they say, I don't want to work. I want to be entertained. So if you're a professional personality or curator, you know your business, I'll tune in to you and you give me things to watch. That's your job. My job is to watch it and occasionally watch the ads too. Let's, let's, let's be serious. Um, so from my standpoint, all of the programming we do on Portico and all of our mosaics has a barker, has a, has a person who knows the field and is talking to you about here's six new channels. You may have never heard of before, but they deep, they'll dive deep into technology. If you're really a technology news buff, then we'll have six channels of technology with from Revision 3 or Wall Street Journal. Um, brands you know, you may not associate it as being a television brand, but you'll trust them to go deep in that affinity, in that personal passion, whatever it is. Um, so we're building brands and personalities around programming that is new and engaging. So there's lots of new, you know, there's the makers, there's all this, uh, ah, yeah. you know, all these new television that Reno you know, Vision 3 was, was now, you know, is now part of Discovery. And um, what do you see the kind of the so, future there? Yeah, so, so where are the new sources that we go to? Where are the new, who are the new channel developers? Well, there's certainly uh, programming coming down market from Discovery and CBS. Down market in the sense that it's more like AAA baseball versus major leagues. That's how I think of it. So you'll see clearly that. Revision 3, CBS Interactive owns Chow and things of that nature. You'll see people coming in from the side. Uh, Hearst Magazine, Condé Nast, uh, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, people like that. Brands you know, not historically associated with television, but they'll come across the video. And then you mentioned the, the makers, the bedrockets, the, the machinimas, and people like that. They're the other people coming up from the low end YouTube, where it's really better on a PC than the rest. You look at Machinima, a lot of it's short form cheats and tricks with a guy in front of a webcam um, about how I beat Assassin's Creed. Doesn't make for great television, per se. And so from that standpoint, but, but some of the stuff that's coming up is beauty tips where people are actually, uh, women are trying on makeup and teaching how to do that. Very targeted, very adventurous. You could go for hours and work it. Um, uh, runway television in fashion, things of that nature. So I think you'll see a lot going on in those kinds of things. And you'll see some very creative, but more professionally produced, more um, long hold times, more engaging, not short clippy uh, kinds of things. Because people on a, on a couch on a TV set don't want to be you know, restarting the television every three minutes. That makes no sense. They want to engage in something, tune in, and sit back and be entertained. So, so there's been a lot of talk about the tipping point, this, may, this being the tipping point for, say, live. Ah. Live. Yeah, I was around AOL in the early years I, uh, and watched the community, the auditoriums and the chat rooms take off, and it was consumer-driven. And to be honest with you, I haven't been as directly engaged in anything since then like what you're seeing now. So you, this is now consumer-driven. We've been trying to do interactive television for 10, 15 years. And it just wasn't catching with the consumer. This is, it's, but it's more about targeting access, and, uh, targeting programming, and access and control than it is about interactivity per se. Um, the ads will be more engaging. The rest of so the tipping point, uh, I think you're seeing it. The adoption rate of connected devices on the wall in the house, mobile's going off for other reasons, going crazy. Tablets. Absolutely. But in the living room is the next big one. That's the big place where the primary screen is the big screen. And we're seeing that tipping point now. How the traditional bundles and the rest work within this environment as it changes on them, real interesting set of discussions. Uh, they don't go away. I'm sorry. It, Comcast has ESPN and MTV locked down for 10 years now. So, And, and they'll come on internet connected TV. So I, again, I don't worry about that. That kind of quality programming will be there. How it gets bundled, the rest may be different. But, uh, you know, it's going to be there. It's the new stuff coming in that you have better choice and control of and getting rid of the things you don't watch. I mean, right now, if you get 500 channels and you watch 15, that means 93% of the things you buy you don't watch. Well, if the things are that are on there that I would never watch, and there's no serendipity potential at all for that, then get rid of them. Don't have them in my house. Because I don't want them. I just, you know, it's not about a price, it's about inconvenience. You're annoying me. So better utilization and better packaging and better distribution, absolutely a better user experience. The role of advertising. I mean, you think about it, back in the history of 48, that was all ad-based. You know, it was Lucille Ball, it was all ad-based. 1979, it was a hybrid. Subscription and advertising started the cable model. You know, the new releases over on Netflix is no ads, 
all subscription. The consumer is now paying all the freight on the you know where on the Netflix side. Is that the right answer? I don't think so. Whatever happened to free TV? You know, the broadcast guys are now in retransmission. I believe free TV will make a major reentry into the marketplace, um, and that it'll do it in a respectful way, an engaging way. We can do more with less and less ads. We can target it. We can actually reach out to and get underwriters who are big in their area. I can prove that people don't hate advertising. Just look at Glamour magazine. Um, pe people read the ads before they read the articles. So th same thing in a cooking show. If you know, if a, if the chef is using an all-clad, I'm real interested in that all-clad pot. You know, whatever it is, I may go in and spend some time on it because it's useful and engaging. So reinventing that model of the role of advertising in this kind of programming is where the fun begins. Challenges and opportunities that, that face the industry and, and yeah. the work that you're doing. The, the first challenge is scale. You, you have to be able to be on a large enough device. It, I'm in the ad supported area. So you have to have enough platforms and scale to make it worthwhile for the underwriters to show up. Um, that's the biggest challenge. And then proving, as they say, the dogs eat the dog food. But I don't hate calling them the consumer dog. But, but, but the point being is, can I create programming that is engaging um, in these niche areas? So that's really the challenge. The technology works. We can do all the other stuff. But is it a quality programming experience? Is it entertaining? Am I going to sit on my couch and watch this for a while? That's our job. That's what we have to do. And what, what would you say in terms of our greatest opportunity in, in oh, the greatest opportunity is that, you know, think about what you would do if you knew that in 1979 on September 7th, that little network was going to turn into 40% of the EBITDA of Disney Corporation. Um, I might invest differently. You know, I certainly would pay attention differently if I knew that. So the greatest opportunity is I think you are reinventing a whole new class of programming in the world of television. And that's the biggest upside ever. And that's why I'm in this business. That's the fun part. Thank you.